Welcome to Mind Meets Body and Soul, a podcast that connects the dots between clinical mental health and spiritual holistic wellness. I'm Heather, a licensed clinical social worker and mental health guru. And I'm Devin, a Reiki master, spiritual teacher, and lover of all things woo-woo. We're here to discuss various wellness topics, highlighting the connection between the mind, body, and soul. We'll be offering nuggets of wisdom from each of our fields with the ultimate goal of bridging the gap between our two worlds. Whether you lean more into cognitive psychology or flow with the woo-woo waters, our intention is to help you prioritize yourself and unlock a fresh perspective to healing, growth, and expansion. We're so excited you're here. Let's jump in. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 21 of Mind Meets Body and Soul. Heather here. So excited to bring you a really fun guest episode this week on the last week of the month. How you doing, my co-host, Devin? Hi, everyone. Happy to be here for another episode. And we love those end of the month episodes because we get to bring in a special guest, Heather, last month you brought in Alex, a uh, family and children therapist, and it was so great to have that conversation with him. In that time too, we've also explored a little bit about your chart, your human design chart. We've also teased in last episode that we were bringing on my human design coach. So I am so excited to bring on this month's podcast guest, Cynthia Davidson. Cynthia is the founder of Intuitive Essentials and your very own human design strategist and energy alchemist, providing a wealth of tools to assist you in tuning your frequency, raising your vibration, and better helping you understand your divine design through one-on-one guidance, partnership sessions, and team or group engagements, utilizing human design, the emotion and body codes, sound therapy, mindfulness, and movement just to name a few of the many tools in Cynthia's chest. So Cynthia, you are a mentor of mine, a huge inspiration to me. You wear so many hats. Welcome to Mind Meets Body and Soul. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. We're happy to have you, Heather. I've talked to you before about Cynthia, that exploring human design with Cynthia was my very first introduction to human design. And it really opened up so much for me in understanding my energy type and how I'm meant to show up. So of course, we have many listeners that are interested, have maybe no idea what human design is. So Cynthia, why don't you kick us off with your explanation of what human design is? Absolutely. So I love to think of human design as a user's guide or a manual to how you're wired at your very core, Um, almost a GPS to help you in finding your way on this path, this journey through this human experience. And what I found absolutely fascinating about it is unlike personality tests, like the Enneagrams and the Myers-Briggs we've probably all taken, and those are cool, but they're like a snapshot in time, just one moment of you right then. But for me, especially every single time I take them, I'm a different whatever type it is. So with human design, you are who you are at your core. It doesn't change. Now, you can be high vibing sometimes, low vibing other times. So how you present the aspects might be slightly different, but it is what it is. And I just find that incredible. And once you have this understanding of who you are, it can be so validating. That's human design in a nutshell. I'm excited to like learn all of the things as we go through this conversation in what you just shared, Cynthia, can you expand a little bit on like, okay, so how, how is this instilled in us? How is this determined? Like I am who I am. How do we know that? Absolutely. So it seems like pretty simplistic, but it's all based on your birth information, your birth time the date and the location. And the time piece is pretty important when we get down to some of the the deeper layers of this mini layered onion. Um, But even if you just have your birth date, oftentimes you can get a generality. However, I'll caveat that with human design aspects can change minute by minute. There are twins 
who are born a minute apart and they're different types, for example. So if you can get your birth time or find someone to help you hone in on that birth time, it makes it so much better. But all of it's just based on that birth information. What that then does is it goes into this little algorithm and all of this that was downloaded from on high. The universe brought it to Rahu Aru. And it's a combination really of a variety of different modalities. So I find that fascinating too. There's the woo-woo stuff that I'm totally into. So our astrology, our I Ching, our Kabbal, um, the chakra system. But then on the other side of it, there is actual science that gets rolled up into this. There's quantum physics and there's genetics. So it's absolutely fascinating. I believe there are about 11 different modalities. Last time I took account of what they roll up in there. And it spits out this really funky looking chart. If you ever haven't done it, you can go to any free chart generator. I have one on my website, but it's a lot of lines and shapes and numbers and all the things. And so you can think I'm just someone like me um, or even look up online a variety of different places, the core pieces. So that birth information, kind of like astrology, gets rolled up into presenting different aspects of yourself, which can explain then how you're wired. I always love, and it's like, kind of by chance, yet not really, how all of our podcast guests just so beautifully represent, you know, what we're doing here on this podcast with Mind Meets Body and Soul of bridging the gap between the more woo-woo world and then the, you know, clinical psychology research-based world. And you are a perfect hybrid of both of those worlds. And I, I just love like, you know, how synchronistic this having you on as a guest is. So thank you for breaking that down because of course, I'm sure Heather's like, you know, need for like scientific backing is like, okay, yeah, this, this checks out. (laughs) Yeah. Quantum physics, like is as, as, as like clinical and research based as you can get. So (laughs) yeah, score. (laughs) (laughs) And spoiler alert, I know that you just mentioned it. Um, I'm excited because I know that you just developed your own chart generator, right? For people to look up their charts. Yes, I found this tool that allows folks like me who have gone deep, deep, deep into human design, we guide, we teach all the things where they will allow you to host this generator on your site, like for pennies, it's really pretty cool. And it's completely branded to you. So um, Yes, I was able to put it on my site and put my own flair on it because I didn't mind some of these others and I actually partner with different human design folks. There's room for everyone out here, but I really wanted to put my own flavor and spin on top of it. So very soon I'll be able to modify even the different uh, monikers of the aspects on your human design chart to fit more of how I want to communicate and teach about human design. So I'm super excited about that coming. Awesome. Well, congrats on that. And I can attest I have used your chart generator and I love it. It's very aesthetically pleasing as well, just the the colors and the whole the whole setup of it. So for those who are listening, get to the end of the episode, maybe or not. The links will be in the show notes to pull up your chart. And I know that a lot of what you've just spoken is foreign language to some. And I have to admit that some of it still is foreign to me as well. So why don't we just start with the basics? I think this is like where everybody can start at is what are the different human design types? Absolutely. And thank you for taking me back because I get so excited and I forget, ooh, not everybody has gone down the rabbit hole like I had. So yes, so type. This is like one of the key aspects in human design. And this is how your energy is meant to flow in the world. Once people can get a solid understanding of their energy type and get to living that type, living their design is what I like to say, oh, we, you get so much more flow and leads in life. Um, just this week, I was talking to a couple of different clients. They were hitting their head up against the wall and we've been together for a while, like a couple of them, a couple of years. And so I always, though, still, even at that level and depth, we go back to our type and say, hey, have you been living your design? Have you been going with the flow of how you're supposed to energetically? What that means. There are five different types in human design. One of them we talk about first is a generator. And I am what we call a pure generator because there is another generator type, manifesting generator, which we'll talk about next. But us generators, 
the way we show up in the world when we're aligned is we are just this bubbling of energy. We're like these batteries, energizer bunnies almost, if we're doing things that light us up on the daily. We are meant to wake up in the morning full of all this excitement, do the things all day long that just light us up. They make us super duper happy. And if we're able to do that, then when we get to bed at night, we actually fall out exhausted, but like a wonderfully luxurious, satisfying exhaustion. And we sleep really well. And then we get up and do it all again the next day. And when we're doing things in this fashion, we actually get a whole lot done. So we're doers. But also we can energize other people and other types around us. And so it's just amazing when that can happen for us. Now, our manifesting generators, those, they have the pure generator bits, but then they can do not just one or two things that light them up, but they have the ability to juggle like 10 things at once if they're aligned, if they're things they're truly interested in and they're meant to be doing. So that's the super cool part is they're like energizer bunnies on steroids and they can just go and do and do and do. However, they don't always have as much energy as a pure generator if things are dragging them down, if they're people pleasing, if they're not doing things that are quite aligned. So for manifesting generators, they'll want to pay a little bit more attention to periods where they need rest, listening to your body to seeing where they might need to slow it down. In addition, pivoting. A manifesting generator, they're not going to want to stick with it. A generator can usually stick to something and get all the way to the finish time and then sometimes they drop the ball on it. But however, a manifesting generator, they might just be done with learning whatever they were meant to learn in that particular stint and it's time to pivot. It's time to move on to something else aligned. It can cause some kind of challenges every now and again, but if they do that, set it aside, delegate it to someone else, then they're going to have much more flow and ease. Our third type I'm going to talk about, that's going to be our I'm going to talk about next our manifestors. So our manifestors, which I know Devin is one, manifestors have a much more dominating, very strong aura and presence. Their energy is just like woof, right there. These are the folks back in the day. They were our, our, our dignitaries, our regal folks, our kings, our queens. Um, and you just, you know, when they walk into a room. And our manifestors are meant to just be bold, be out there, and they just get the stuff going. Yes, like, yes, they just make it all happen, right? Um, they, though, their energy flow, they need a bit more rest. And their rest is very specific. They need to rest on their own, in their own space, in their own time, and getting away from everything and everyone so they can regenerate and come back to being their strong self. They don't do this. Manifestors have a tendency to burn out and have a really hard time getting back up into the swing of things. So they have this big, bold, pulsing energy when they're on and ready. Go pull back, rest when you need to rest. You can come back and do it all again. Our projectors are out there next. I believe Heather's a projector. So with our projectors, your energy level, oh gosh, you, when you're on and something's like, yes, this is the thing I'm going to communicate to the world. I've been invited to share this, or I just feel like it needs to be known. I need to share my wisdom. Then you will be able to do this in an hour, what takes many people 10 hours to do. So it's actually very targeted, focused, laser-like kind of energy that you can exude and get things done. You're usually pretty good with systems. You are good at guiding people. You're our teachers in the world. It's like pretty amazing, all this wisdom that you're here to share. However, you don't have as much energy as some of the other types. It comes from different sources in different ways, and it's really short stints. So it's super important to honor your need for rest. You may take two, three naps during the day. So having the flexibility and the autonomy to do that when you need to do it is super duper important. And the last of the five energy types is going to be our reflectors. And these folks are our mirrors. They have so much open energy and they see all and they reflect it back to us. They let us know what's going on because they can feel it, all of it. And so important for reflectors is to understand what's theirs versus someone else's. And 
being very conscious and cognizant and really specific about the spaces they're in and the people they're around and making sure it's something that feels really good to them for their energy to flow best and for them to be uh, more assured and certain in what is theirs. And then they can go and do the reflections that they need to. These make really good analysts, people who are assessors, auditors of situations because they can so easily discern what's going on and then share that back to us, whoever might be in their realm. The interesting thing about reflectors is their energy doesn't come from the moon um, as in, I'm sorry, the sun as in the other four types, but it rather comes from the moon. So it's super important for reflectors if they can and they're interested in it to start to learn about lunar cycles because that is going to impact them hugely as things go. So that is just the core, the foundation, our energetic type and flow. And if a person can get on board with those little bits that we've been shared today, it's going to make life a lot easier. Mm, beautifully explained. Thank you, Cynthia. In the episode where um, we were getting to know Heather and I was telling her a little bit about her projector human design type, I did add the disclosure that I am by no means a human design expert and hence why we have brought you in here. Heather, let me just ask you, you being a projector, me being a manifester, was it just me or were you hearing Cynthia talk about the generator human design type? And did you already feel like tired just from hearing about the generator? <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm like, oh boy. Okay. This is like a like big one to start out with because like my little projector energy, like that was a big burst for me. <laughs> yes. No, I, I can be a bit much. I know. <laughs> <laughs> in the best way, in the absolute best way. It's it's important, I think, that you're here with this energy, like teaching all of us about it because you're modeling to us, like one, your type, but also like you're passionate about this. And like, I can see that. And that makes it so much more um, like interesting to listen to. And I'm just like fascinated as you're going through all of this information. Yay. Cynthia, let me ask you too, because I, I have my baby understanding of human design, but true or false, does most of the world operate as if we were all generators? Like, does the world expect us to be generators? <laughs> it's so interesting that you say that. And actually, I've never thought about it but that way, but yes, because actually 70% of the population are a generator type, whether it's a pure generator or a manifesting generator. So most people do operate with this kind of like, I'm going to go, I'm going to do, I'm going to build and oftentimes have the energy to do it. So there's like this sort of conditioning that everyone will be the same way. Of course you can go and do all the time and be the same way. And the corporations actually thrive on having generator types in their organizations because we're built to work in team environments. It's just the way we're wired. And so you can get lots of things done for the businesses. So businesses are often like, oh yeah, this I want all of these doers and these worker bees in there. And it worked way back in the day because that's how we got things built. That's how we got things done. But it's super important to understand that everybody has their role and their energy might not flow like a generator. And so not to feel the need to go and do like a generator does, honor your type, your need for rest, because there is a role for you that you're meant to play. And we're missing out on it if you try to hop on the generator train. If you're burnt out laying in bed and can't even move because you're trying to be like a energizer bunny when you're supposed to be a projector and guiding us and teaching us along the way, then no one is going to be moving forward and progressing in life because you're not playing your role. So yes, I do believe, Devin, that people feel like they must operate in that manner because the majority of the population can and often does, but it would be so much better if everyone kind of stayed in their lane, played their energetic role, because then we would like move forward faster and expand together. It's so interesting too, because like one of my friends was recently saying that she went to Spain and she was like, I would thrive in like siesta culture where like we go to work and then like we come home and have a break. And like, it's interesting to think how everyone functions so differently. Like I know if I see too many clients back to back, I'm jipping my last client in that like, I'm not going to be fully present. I'm like not going to be able to like focus for the full 45 minutes and give them my best. 
And it's really validating to know that like, I've always just chalked it up to like, I have to have better boundaries. Mm -hmm. But I think now I'm knowing like, I don't have to be so harsh or critical or like judgmental of myself for like working the way that I do. I'll come home sometimes and be like, I'm just going to chill for like 45 minutes and then like, I'll get back to it. And I'm so much more focused when I do that. And I, I know that that's my best self. So it's really validating for me to hear you explain all of this. Oh, I'm so glad. Yes. Once we get to the understanding and we give ourselves permission to be who we are and flow with our energy, however it flows, it is an absolutely amazing and liberating thing. One thing specifically that um, stood out to me when you were explaining too, was that everybody has their specific human design type for a reason, right? Like everybody has their unique role and we have to have all of these different roles to, to make the world go around. Right. So I was wondering if you would just like, maybe in like one sentence or less with each human design type, what they're here to do, like what's their role overall? Yes. And so generators, we build, we do, we, uh, serve as a battery for everyone. For our manifesting generators, we can build, do, and you can do it like exponentially, like faster than anybody else. And you can also help to pivot us into new directions, innovations. For our manifestors, you get us going. You initiate us. You drive the chain, the train. You're the conductor. Um, so we are to follow you, incredible leaders. For our projectors, you actually are guides, teachers, really phenomenal at creating systems for us all. So you are meant to kind of get the plan going, the container set up, and then show us the way for everyone else to do. And then for our reflectors out there, they assess it all. They analyze it for us. They let us know, hmm, yeah, we're going in the right direction. We're doing good or nope might need to do something a little bit different. Let's tweak the system and do it all over again. Wow. You, you understood the assignment and you showed up perfectly. <laughs> and that's like a dream. That would be like a dream team. I'm just thinking if we had like each of those players on our team, like Devin and I work really well together because Devin is the initiator. She's the leader. And I'm like, okay, but like, what's the plan? Like, how are we putting this together? Like you have the vision, but how do we get there? And I'm the system builder. But like, I think it's important to have that balance. Like I love the reflector for being able to like assess the quality of this and make sure that like it's going well. And I think we need to have those generators there, like energizing us and like keeping the ship going. I think it's just like, as you're talking through each of those, I'm like, that is a literal dream team. Yes, it's amazing if you can get all those components together. But no fret if you can't, because there are really cool synergies in any partnership with these different types. It's just understanding where there might be energy gaps, so to speak. Um, but there's ways of feeling those. So like for you all, you could have a reflector who's someone who just taps in every now and again to help assess your process and then offer recommendations. So it can be done. It's just having an understanding of how your pieces fit together currently. Mm, it's a great reminder. Thank you. And, and, you know, with that too, I like the reminder that just because you are a generator, just because I am a manifester doesn't mean that we don't like tap into some of the things that you know, for example, you as a generator have. And that brings me to like some of the other kind of important aspects. Would you want to touch on that? Yes. So while energy type, it's the key, it's where we all start. It's the first thing that we usually take a look at. There are a couple other key aspects now today. I could talk about this for hours, but we're not going to peel back all the layers of the onion. Um, you don't have to find me if you need to. But I will talk about uh, at least two other keys today, and we'll see uh, if we can get to a few more. The next two down are going to be a strategy and an authority. Our strategy in human design is going to be how the best opportunities come to us, how things come to us first, then to make a decision on whether or not they're aligned and for us to move forward with. And that decision making is going to be done through our authority. If you can marry these two this is kind of like the combination of what people start talking about with manifestation. And I'm sorry, I'm just going to say a side note. Not everyone's meant to manifest in the same way. 
I said it out loud. Okay. Now, our strategy and authority, I'm going to talk about these in tandem for each of the different types um, as much as possible. Uh, with the strategy, though, it usually goes by type. There are a few others outside of that, though. With the authority, they're all over the place. So here we go. Strategies. For our, uh, the type of strategies that there are, for our generators and manifesting generators, we are to respond to things. So where I've come to with this is sometimes people say, wait to respond. I don't like the piece about sitting on your hands and waiting, even though it's not what that means. So what I like to say now is open your awareness and respond to what's in your realm. Sometimes us as generator types, we don't realize what is out there for us. What is already sitting there waiting for us? We don't see it because we might have blinders on or our head in the sand. But once we poke up and we see what out there, we become aware of those opportunities and then we can respond to them. If we don't see anything in our realm for any reason, we can actually have people help us by giving us something to respond to. So they can ask us yes, no questions, this, that questions, um, anything that might light up our gut. And we'll talk about that because when we responding to things and if we had a sacral authority, then we like, we know what's right for us. It just lights us up from our inside out. Everybody's sacral response is different. Mine's very animated. Now that I've allowed it to be that way, I didn't use to, I just watched it. But that's my yes, it's very obvious. My no's are more contractions. That's for other sacrals too. And then um, my in-betweens, yeah. that usually means it's not for me in this moment, in this point in time. So when I marry responding to things and other generator types do that, with yes that's my yes or no that's a no for me and i move on for that thing because it's not aligned again that could be so much more easeful i find when i start snatching at the world and going after things that haven't come to be that they usually don't work out very well and so I'm like dang it and i go back and I say "Ooh, did i snatch at that or did it come to me and it usually is that I was like, I wanted it so bad or I thought it was a good idea and it really wasn't. So marrying the strategy and authority in that manner is super duper important. Let's go on to another strategy and, and marry that what that looks like. So for our projector types, ooh, for y'all, it's this wait for an invitation. Again, I don't like the wait piece of it. So what I'm starting to say is I'm invited. Get yourself invited. The way to get yourself invited as a projector is to show up and show out, like be seen. Really hard for projectors sometimes like, no, I don't want anybody looking at me. I don't want to put my stuff out there. It's just not happening. Well, you can get beyond that barrier and like, you know, get outside yourself. Um, then it's absolutely amazing because the invitations are flooding in. They're actually everywhere. And being aware of the different ways invitations are coming to you, that's pretty cool too. And then though, all these invitations aren't meant for you. So what do you do? It's important for you then to respond based on your authority. For some projectors, this is gonna be um, an authority of mental, like you wanna talk things out. You don't need anyone else's permission to do things, but you need to talk through all these different ways of doing things and what your decision could be. You could look at this, look like that. And then after you talk it through, all of a sudden, ding, 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 you're clear. It comes through very automatically what you're meant to do. Um, other projectors, though, it's an intuitive thing. Just know automatically, ooh, that invitation is meant for me. Yes, I'm going to do it. Quick, in a second. Bing! And you just know. Other folks, it might be kind of like a feeling that you get. Um, but you might have to wait a little bit to get some clarity on that feeling, too. So sleeping on things can be really beneficial and not just responding in the moment. Um, cause you might say yes to something that you really didn't want to do, or you might say no to something that would be an amazing invitation to have accepted. Right. So those are a lot of the different authority combinations for projectors and how you can discern whether or not an invitation is for you. I'm going through in my head. <laughs> you can see me. I'm like, ding, ding, ding. Did I check them all off? Now for our manifestors. So manifestors, I'm kind of jelly because manifestors they kind of get to do it opposite. They don't have to wait for an invitation. They don't have to wait to respond for something. For you all, it's just like, it comes to you, it's clear, do it, initiate it, start it. And then get out the way 
or let people know is the important part so they can get on your train. So the informing piece is super important. So I like to think of this combination as initiate and inform, because if you start something, you initiate something, if you don't let people know what you're doing or what you're about, at least anyone it's going to impact, you don't have your doers. You don't have anyone who's actually going to buy if you have a business. You don't have anyone who's going to support you if it's a family member or a friend, if you don't let them know what's going on. So the informing part is super important. Why I find manifestors sometimes get a little bitter and angry, we'll talk about this in a second too, is that um, you're like, well, shoot, I started this amazing thing and no one's showing up. No one's supporting me. No one's helping me on it. Well, it's like, uh, did you let them know? <laughs> and then say, ooh, maybe not. Maybe I need to let some folks know what's going on so they can help me out with this, get on my train, they can buy the thing. Then for our reflectors, with having these uh, lunar cycle, being so in tuned with moon cycles and what's going on with the ebb and flow of the moon, it's really important for reflectors to pause and ponder is what I like to call it. So just kind of like something comes in, comes into your realm of wellness and just kind of saying, hmm, how does this set with me over time, over an entire lunar cycle sometimes? Ah, and people are saying, what? I need to wait a lunar cycle to figure out what to eat. No, I'm not talking about that. For all of these and making your decisions, it's going to, uh, if it's a wait for clarity kind of thing, the emotional authority, or if it's this pause and ponder lunar cycle thing, it's for the big decisions. It's the big things for any of them, really. And you don't have to wait an inordinate amount of time necessarily for the small things. There are other pieces of your chart that can help you make the smaller decisions if you're having trouble with those. But these are for the major ones, buying a house, buying a car, finding a partner, moving somewhere, getting a job, all those things. So yes, for reflectors, if they can wait an entire lunar cycle and keep checking back in with themselves and reflecting on, well, could it be this? Could it be that? How am I feeling in this moment? They're going to make their best decision after that entire cycle. So that was it in a nutshell. I think I caught all the major authorities. They can go with different types. I'm just going down my little checks just now because we talked about being sacral, trusting your gut. We talked about if you get these little spidey sense hints, trusting your intuition. We talked about an emotional authority or solar plexus authority. That's where you want to sleep on it and wait for some clarity to come through so that you make the best decision for yourself. And then we have some of our mental projector people out there who like to like talk it through or wait for that entire lunar cycle. There are a few others out there, but those are the high hard ones. There is so much to human design. It still overwhelms me, but the way that you explain it at least really helps, you know, any beginners break it down. And I think that that's so important because again, we kind of expect people to behave, to act, to take action in a very singular way, right? Like everybody should be doing this. Everybody should be responding to this. Like when I ask you a question, you should have an answer like that. And what you've just shared with us is like, that's not how it goes. Like some of us, yes, do have that intuitive. Yep. I know for sure. Others really do need that space. And so I find that I find human design really comforting in the way that it gives us permission to be our own unique energy type and to, you know, respond to contemplate questions and, you know, proposals in a way that really suits us and the way that we're really made to. Absolutely. All I have to say is I hope my husband is listening because I need to talk out loud with him about things all the time. And he's like, why do you like just make a decision? And I'm like, I literally can't. I have to like flush it out. So thank you for saying that. Oh, you're so welcome. I think what's interesting too, again, coming back to this permission to be ourselves, sometimes like even though it is our human design type, even though the way that it, you know, it is the way that we're made up. I find it challenging as a manifester to always be initiating. And I don't know if you find this too with other like, you know, feminine and, uh, manifestors, like, but being like a, a female, it's not as natural for us to always initiate, initiate, take action when that is deemed more of a masculine essence, if that makes sense. 
It does. It makes perfect sense. And what I found is a lot of folks uh, are needing to decondition because um, our society, people around us, they condition us in that way and say that, oh, you're not supposed to be initiating things. You need to let other people do that. But it just doesn't feel right in your soul, down in your gut. You just know it's not quite right for you. You need to be putting these things out there. So it's like have, peeling back the layers of the conditioning also, shedding that, learning that it is okay to initiate, that uh, you have nothing to prove, that um, this is a fabulous idea, and this is how you're wired and how your energy is meant to flow. So sometimes we need to marry this with other modalities. Like it might be cool if it's comfortable for you to go talk to someone about it, a therapist or somewhat, or if energy work is more your jam, go to someone to help you in clearing out that energy and getting yourself more aligned in a variety of different modalities of that. Or if it's just, you know, um, connecting with other people and realizing everybody has these blocks and they've been conditioned in a certain way that might be very different from the way they're designed and that giving yourselves permission to live your design and having this little community of folks that you can go and share with and say, oh my gosh, this was horrible. How can I maybe try to get back on track and more aligned? And, or just even just commiserating, even if no one can give you any support and help and what to do for the next steps. But deconditioning, trying to learn that it's okay to be you, however you are wired, can be absolutely liberating, as I mentioned before. It can be super hard, though, sometimes to get the ball rolling and even testing it. That's the one thing I also love about human design. And it's an experiment. If something doesn't resonate with you, throw it out. If it does, but you're having a hard time living it, connect with people, get some support in whatever form works best for you. I was thinking about that, Cynthia, as you were talking, because like, I almost think like this probably brings up a lot for people. It brings up a lot for me in, in, I'm, I'm thinking of specific people that I know are like probably generators. They're just like, go, go, go. And they have found what lights them up and they do that thing. And it's harder for me to be like, well, I need a break. Like I need to rest. And I think like, it's like that saying people say of trying to fit a round peg in a square hole. Like we're not all the same. And I think if we can, as coworkers, as friends, as as leaders show up and allow people to be who they are, we're going to get the most out of them. It might look different or be at a different time or in a different way, but I think this is so helpful for me because I want to know the people in my circle. I want to know their human design type so that I can support them. And then I want my clients to know their human design type so we can unpack what's what they feel about that, or if they're judging that, or if they have a hard time, like accepting or processing that, like, let's do that too, because then you'll get the most out of your life. Absolutely. This is a really powerful tool, I think. Yes, that's exactly. It's my number one tool, my fave. And along those lines, Cynthia, of using human design as this kind of, as this blueprint to understanding yourself, how you're made to show up. And then also understanding others, like how can we use human design, you know, beyond what you've already graciously offered to be in, in our greatest alignment with ourselves and also to recognize, you know, alignment in others. Absolutely. So I was asked a question the other day, oh gosh, I don't know this person's birth information. So how to, I, you know, use human design as a tool to help me in my engagement with them or I don't know my exact birth time. How can I use this for myself? So what I've realized is you don't necessarily even have to go to the depths. It's, it's really cool if you can get the birth, the, uh, the human design chart and learn the, all the different aspects. That is what can help us more specifically. Even if you just go with feeling, so I'm going to explain this by type. If you feel a certain way, it can help you understand that you're off track that you're not aligned. And so I call these guideposts. So if you know nothing else, but just if you get this feeling consistently or someone else does, then this can help you. So for generators and for manifesting generators, if we're out of alignment, we feel very frustrated. Um, it's palpable and we can cause frustration for other people toward us as well. The other side of that is feeling satisfied. 
And that's going to be something that's more in alignment. So you don't have to know anything else about if you're feeling frustrated at some point, then you likely want to change something in your life to get back more into alignment. And it probably means that you're likely a generator type. For our manifesting generators, you can layer on to that since you're part manifester as well. We didn't talk much about it, but you are. So frustration, anger can come in too, okay? And the other side of anger is a peace, feeling of peace or zen. Our manifestors, that's your thing. It's going to be angry, like really, oh, or someone else anger toward you. You get more peaceful and zen when you're in alignment. For our projectors out there, it's going to be a feeling of bitterness, saltiness, like, ooh, I told them to do the thing and they didn't do the thing. Um, the other side of that, though, is a feeling of success. It's like, yes, it was done. Mom's feeling goal successful. And then for our reflectors out there, reflectors are going to feel a disappointment um, when they're not in alignment. The other side of that, though, is like a, a shock, awe, a surprise, like, oh my gosh, it worked out. That's pretty cool. So again, if you knew nothing else, but you knew you had those feelings occasionally, you can kind of discern possibly what type you are, but more than anything else, you can connect better with other people, knowing that there's something that you want to sort out, work out, change in your life to get you back to the other side of it, the guide post that's more on the positive range to start moving forward. Um, I'll add on to this though. If you do know someone's birth information, you're able to run their chart, yours, people in your circle. There are so many different ways where you can find out how you can best align together. Um, there are people out there like myself who can run partnership charts for you. There are people out there who, like myself who can run uh, team dynamics charts. Um, there are a variety of different ways that we can look at how the energies are synergistic versus not. But even if you just know your own and you don't know the others, you can flip it and say, okay, if I know that I need space and grace and time for rest or even time to make decisions, what can I do then in interacting with other people to let them know this about me so that we can have a better relationship with each other, better communicate with each other? It could just be simply saying, you know, I really need to sleep, sleep on this. I need to think about it. I'll get back to you next week, next month, whatever it is. So it can help us in communicating what we want, need, and best ways to support us, which can then help in our interactions with other people too. I hope that answered your question, Deb. Something that was, it's just really illuminating about this whole conversation is in so many of the episodes, Heather and I talk all the time about how important having this self-awareness is and how difficult it is, but how important self-awareness is. And like, the, I feel like that's, you know, a perfect reason for why to discover your human design type it, because it's bringing awareness to the self. And then having that awareness of the self then comes in that, as you mentioned, that communication aspect, because, you know, as much as we would love for people to read what's on our mind and to, you know, see us and accept us exactly as we are, like we're all coming from such different perspectives human design types. And so it's hard for us to fully understand another person, you know, their needs, their, their types. So in comes that communication aspect of like, first understand who you are, how you're made up, and then learn to communicate that, to share that with those that you love, with those that are trying to help you. Absolutely. I'm curious, um, Cynthia, if there's any connection because, well, I'm curious if there's any connection between human design and like, I don't know what you know about like clinical, um, like mental health diagnoses and like the DSM or like even like astrology on the other side, because like I have ADHD and I'm thinking like my projector type and needing to take breaks also like supports with like my ADHD and like I need to like do small things and like take breaks between to like maintain my attention. So like, is there any connection between like my more clinical world and then like the astrology world and like what's, what is the connection if any? Yes. I'm glad you asked this question. Um, so yes, I'm not a medical professional. However, <laughs> I do have 30 years in the corporate world and I do have 
a psychology degree and a couple of certifications in a few areas. So caveat this response by that. What I found fascinating is trying to find correlations in human design, astrology, and uh, Western medicine in general, and then therapy in particular. A lot of folks have diagnoses of like ADHD, um, OCD tendencies, that kind of thing. What I found is often um, they might have an open head space, which is another deeper layer of our um, human design. If they have an open head, then it can cause a scattered feeling and an unfocused feeling. Um, they might have arrows pointing to the right that can also cause us to just want much more flow and we're trying to be forced into structure and that can cause some issues as well. I have found that several different aspects of human design where people were struggling with them, they've often been given a diagnosis that kind of explains it. When we've corrected it, deconditioned them on the human design front, giving them tools to help them with that aspect of themselves so they can higher vibe in it versus a low vibe in it, the diagnosis has been lessened or it goes away completely. Doesn't happen with everyone, but I have found some correlations there. So understanding your human design chart and how you're wired can also help you in that realm in the Western medical world too. There are these correlations with astrology also. Like if you know your sun, moon, rising sign, there are different areas of a human design chart that I found are correlating as well. And human design does have a gift, a strength in every single one of the major luminaries as well. No, I'm I'm interested. I think that's really fascinating to know that. And it actually makes sense to me that like if we're living in more alignment and we're flowing more, then we're going to feel less of like the the symptoms in the clinical world as we'd call them or like think like Devin says flow over force often. And like if we're moving in alignment and there's more flow, we're going to feel there's going to be things that are like redirecting us less or we're going to hit less walls along the way. So I do think there is something to be said about being more connected to ourselves and looking at ourselves and doing that deeper work so we're aware and then we can be more intentional and flow. I love that. Thank you for sharing all of this. I mean, this is like all very fascinating to me. Oh, I could talk about it for hours. We'll have to get together again. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a great question, Heather, like a great way to, again, like bring your, your world in and, and ask a, a very like valid question. And Cynthia, I, I appreciate exactly the way that you, you know, broke that down and, and shared your experiences with us. Cause I think that's really important to know is that when, when we meet ourselves exactly where we are, you know, and when we understand how we're made up, it just takes away so much of the like societal, cultural imposed standards and expectations for how we're supposed to be. And I really, truly believe that we are headed in a direction, you know, as a collective where like there's more openness to that. It's like there's more acceptance for the unique parts that make us whole. We're going to help there be more and more over time. <laughs> Even from like a group perspective, like I do a lot of like corporate therapy and I think this could be so interesting to bring in and like assess like the energy and the dynamics of a team so that everyone can know how each other works together in a classroom. Like in, there's so many different like systems that I'm thinking that this could be helpful for. It's just knowledge and it's just information. It's, it's really just the facts of how things are. And if we know how things are, then we can work accordingly. And I think that's just so powerful. That's been some of my um, most interesting work and I'm really, really keen on building it out even more is I've been doing more team dynamics workshops using human design and partnerships for business partners. Um, and every single one of them, people were like, oh my goodness, this has just been absolutely amazing just to understand the energy flow within their connection, the synergies, the dissonances, the places where they might be able to plug some gaps. And when corporate 
is more open to this, the Western medicine world as well. It just has so many applications that don't have to change what they're doing in those realms, but they can just enhance it completely. I am so excited for this gradual movement into that because I think that there's so much power in that. And I have seen, you know, human design being brought a little bit into corporate world. Really cool. And with that, Cynthia, you've offered so much for our listeners today to get them started into the world of human design. Do you have any lasting thoughts, suggestions, tips, tools on exploring human design that you'd like to share? Absolutely. I'd say um, it can do nothing but give you a better understanding of yourself. It will likely be very validating. So if you haven't already done it, I just offer to everyone, run your chart. I don't care where you run it, but go run your chart. And if you're having trouble understanding it from wherever you ran it, always reach out to me. I have lots of free tools that you can access to learn more about human design. So there are lots of other free ones out there as well that I'm happy to turn you on to if you're not finding what you need. Most importantly, though, is remember that it's an experiment. It's just information about you. It's a way of understanding yourself better. It's your user's guide manual, and you get to use it however you want to use it. If something's not feeling right, don't feel aligned, doesn't resonate with you, well, throw it out. It's okay. Choose another piece and move on. Um, know that you can apply all of these things in a variety of different aspects of your life. So it doesn't just have to be if you're a woo-woo person and using it at home, it can really be beneficial in your work life, your professional life as well, running your business, all the things. Yeah, I love this. I can't wait to go check, you know, and look more into mine. I hope our listeners either paused this or listened to this again, knowing like and and finding out their human design type, because I think it's it's such a great introductory um, episode and I, you may have to come back and tell us more of the things because you have so much knowledge. If you'll, if you'll be willing to return, I'm not forcing you to do anything, but thank you so love much. You. It's been, <laughs> it's been powerful and amazing. And I love all of it. Oh, I'm so glad. And Cynthia, where can our listeners find you? And do you have any offerings that you would like to share? Yes, thank you for asking. So generators like to be recognized too. Um, so you can find me and my activity if you're on social media on, uh, I'm at intuitive underscore essentials with an S on the end. My website, if you would prefer like to hop on my email list, I don't spam you. I just give some great information and more and more on human design coming soonest. That's going to be intuitive dash essentials.com. And those are the best ways to reach out to me right now. I do have a Facebook page and I'm on LinkedIn as well. If you'd like to find me those ways, um, you can find those links on my website as well. In addition, I have a podcast too. So if you ever wanted to listen to deeper dives on human design, you can come check me out over at Intuitive Essentials Podcast. And a program that I'm running right now that I'd love to share, I have all things human design. So no matter what you want, individual teams, partnerships, all the things, you can go find those on my website. But right now I've just started um, opening up for money gates. It's not just to bring money in, it's all about abundance, but abundance in your life overall, business and personal life. Because I found that once I truly understood myself, how I'm wired, and I started living the design, that's when more abundance was coming into my life. I was getting out of my own way. So I then wanted to share this with other people. I like short hits. So these are just going to be four calls over six weeks. You can go find out more about Money Gates. And I think we'll be dropping the link here as well. If not, you can get it in any of those other places that I told you about, but I'd love for you to come join me on Money Gates. And if you mention that you heard it here on the podcast, I may even give you a little discount on it. So love that. Who would have thought that we could use human design to understand more about how we attract abundance? Well, Cynthia would. <laughs> well, Cynthia would. Yeah. She'd know. <laughs> <laughs> That's all amazing, Cynthia. We will certainly have all of your links and handles and all of the things in the show notes for everybody who's listening so that they can find you and connect with you. This has been really fun. I can't wait to go like look up my chart and learn more. 
Um, thank you so much. We see you. We appreciate you. We totally recognize you and all your generator energy. It's just been really wonderful. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity. And I would love to come back again another time if we wanted to continue our conversation. We're going to have to. And to wrap that up too, Cynthia, at the end of each episode, Heather and I usually take turns looking at, up at our vision boards and seeing if something, some message calls out to us with you being our special guest. Any chance you have something in your area, it doesn't have to be a vision board, but just something or a message that you saw today that you think would be great to end our episode with. Oh, wow. I love that. Um, so what's coming to mind right now is do you boo? It's a, um, a saying that I say, but um, to some people sometimes, and I just feel very comfortable in this form right now. So I was like, do you, and what that means for me is have an understanding of yourself and unapologetically just show up and share your energy in the world. Perfect. Thank you so Love much, it. Cynthia. Such a pleasure having you on here. And we look forward to seeing all of the ways that our listeners connect with and resonate with your messages. Thank you so much. Everybody have a great week and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank see you. you next week. Bye. Bye. We are so glad that you took the time to share this space with us. We'll be releasing new episodes of Mind Meets Body and Soul every Tuesday. So be sure to give us a follow and share this podcast with those you love. To connect with us and join our communities, head to the show notes where you'll find our contact information and individual websites. Until next week, stay grounded, keep growing, and trust that everything you seek is unfolding for you.